Hello YouTube, it's been a while since my last update, as usual. Today I'm going to be testing bilge pump motors converted into thrusters to be used for submersible, remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs for short. The test setup here consists of a pair of 12 volt batteries for power, a voltage and ammeter, the bilge pump motor itself is set up inside an aquarium tank filled with room temperature tap water. The propeller is the 1.9 inch by 3 inch composite RC boat propeller, part number PRB0152 by ProBoat. I've chosen a RC boat propeller over a fan type propeller just based on the blade angle and its ability to work in water as a fluid and not as air. Uh, the motor is actually connected to the propeller by way of a collet fitting. It uses a little sliding metal ring which gets tightened down onto a tapered fitting which clamps down onto the motor shaft. Ordinarily bilge pump motors have these plastic impellers which work with uh, these plastic housings. The bilge pump is actually a centrifugal pump which means it flings the water to the outside of the housing using centrifugal force or centripetal if you're being pedantic. Um, but either way, I don't care about its ability as a water pump. I'm more interested in how much force it outputs as a thruster. I'll be showing you some videos of actual testing with a thousand gallon per hour motor and a 500 gallon per hour motor. I'm mostly interested in the efficiency, the power draw, and the thrust as compared to just the impeller driven out output. The test setup here also has a digital luggage scale with a 50 pound load capacity and a pivot arm connected to it so that the push from the thruster can actually be read as a pull on the scale because I don't have a proper compression load cell. The arm is in a 2 to 1 ratio, so you don't need to point out that it's equal. Um, I can just divide the weight reading in pounds by 2 to determine the actual force being outputted by the thruster motor. Yeah, it's supposed to work something like that. Uh, the the uh, pivot arm ratio is mostly meant so that I can lower the motor completely into the water to avoid water splashing or spraying and cavitation which might cause inaccurate readings. Uh, these are all static load tests so don't take them for too much. It's mostly just a comparison to other forces. Comparison to other values using the same test method. So let's just give this a test. It's a fair bit of output, actually. Right now it's fluctuating between 2.9, 3.2. It's starting to settle in on 3 pounds of thrust. Uh, it's settling down on... Uh, yeah, it's still fluctuating. Call it 2.5 to 3 pounds of thrust. And right now it's drawing about 7 amps. 7 amps at 12 and a half volts DC. So, quite a su substantial amount of power for what it is. But, of course, you can always uh, use pulse width modulation and slow these motors down. Here is the 1,000 gallon per hour bilge pump motor in reverse. Two point four pounds thrust at seven and a half amps, twelve point five volts, settling down to two pounds of thrust. This is the five hundred gallon per hour built front motor in forward. Two pounds of thrust at 13 volts, 5 amps. Lower power consumption, but lower thrust.
Here's the 500 gallon per hour build pump motor in reverse. About 1.5 pounds of thrust, 4.5 amps, 13 volts. Here is the 1,000 gallon per hour bilge pump within its original casing with an impeller in forward. Well, there's only one direction anyway. One pound of thrust at three and a half amps, 13.35 volts. Here is the 500 gallon per hour bilge pump motor in its original housing. We have 0 0.65 to 68 pounds of thrust at 2.5 amps, 13.4 volts. And finally, just for my own amusement, 500 gallon per hour bilge pump motor emptying the fish tank. Here's the 500 gallon per hour bilge pump motor in reverse. Right, flip it around.